This episode of the Child Life Podcast is brought to you by Bella Vita Salon, a full-service, family-friendly salon. You can go to www.kylelife.com forward slash Bella Vita for a Kyle Life Reader exclusive coupon. To schedule your appointment with Bella Vita Salon, call them at 512-395-7278. Once again, that's 512-395-7278. <laughs> Welcome to the Kyle Life Podcast, the only podcast dedicated to showcasing what makes Kyle, Texas unique. We interview local business owners, politicians, and talk with everyday residents to further promote our beautiful city. This podcast is brought to you by KyleLife.com and is proudly part of the Pearl Media Network. We thank you for tuning in today. Now sit back and enjoy the show. Hey guys, Joshua here with Kyle Life, and today I've got a very special guest on the show. She is the founder of a fantastic women's empowerment movement known as Functional Girl, which is headquartered here locally in Kyle, Texas. I'm so happy she was able to set aside some time to come talk with us. Please welcome CJ Laguerre to the show. CJ, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Oh, thanks for having me. So to get this started, could you tell our listeners about yourself, your background, and what led to the creation of Functional Girl? Absolutely. I am a Scorpio. My favorite color is sparkle and I am addicted to 2% organic milk. 2%? 2%. Nice. Nice. Right. <laughs> um, you know, I've had a an amazing and crazy journey. Um, military brat, you know, got to travel the world as a kid, was exposed to so many different types of people and cultures and wouldn't trade that for the world. Yeah. Um, on the flip side of that, had kind of a chaotic, crazy family life, um, just not supportive, kind of a hostile environment. And that led to, well, it just, you know, it translated into every other aspect of my life. So had a really hard time socially, had a hard time making friends, keeping friends, um, had a positive talent for alienating people. <laughs> And on a personal level, you know, just really struggled with my sense of self and sense of self-worth. And that led to, you know, eating disorders and self-destructive behaviors. I left home at 15, um, but ended up, you know, through that kind of crazy, bold decision, taking that first step towards turning my life around and, you know, finished high school with honors, went to college on a theater scholarship and left college my junior year because I signed a contract with Elite. Uh, I was the first plus size ma model in their Miami division and spent my early 20s working as a model and actress in South Florida. In South Florida. Yeah. You can't complain in your 20s uh, working out of South Florida. No, Miami kind of rocks in your 20s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it was um, I guess you could say it was the culmination of something I had been working for for a really long time. I had always wanted to be in the fashion and entertainment industries. Unfortunately, it wasn't what I was looking for. And I didn't find any fulfillment or peace or satisfaction. So I left. I left the industry and it was it was really scary because up until that point, my entire identity had been wrapped up in being able to call myself a model, being able right. to say that I was a member of this elite club. And um, it was really terrifying, but it was unbelievably liberating. And I went into a completely different field. I started working in marketing and the cool part about that was the clients didn't care about my measurements. They didn't care what I looked like. They were concerned with whether or not I was capable and smart and savvy. And it really allowed me to discover who I was and start to build authentic self-esteem. Right. Which is critical for everyone in this life, but particularly for young women. Mm -hmm. And that led to many amazing things. I met my husband and we moved to Texas and bought a house and we've been in Kyle for five years and life just keeps getting better. That's awesome. And Functional Girl was a, was it a thought during that leaving process from the, that industry, the modeling? It really wasn't. I, I knew I was looking for something more. I knew I wanted to contribute. I knew I wanted to make a difference. I knew I had a lot to offer, but I I really didn't understand how to leverage that. I didn't know how I was going to parlay that into a new mission in life, so to speak. And Functional Girl kind of developed really organically. 
I, when, when we first moved to Texas, I wasn't modeling. I wasn't acting. I wasn't working in marketing. And I was like, what am I going to do? I'm going to sell vintage clothing. Yeah. So I was like functional girl, vintage clothing. And I shot a little spec magazine and yeah, no, that lasted like five minutes. And (laughs) it just, I love vintage clothing, but it, it, I don't want to sell clothing. Yeah. (laughs) Well, not in that sense. And then I met an editor uh, for the All Around Hayes publication through the Hayes Free Press at a party and pitched her the Functional Girl column as a life and style advice piece. And she loved it. And that's that's kind of how Functional Girl came into being. It started out as a print column in several local publications. And from there, grew to include workshops and public speaking engagements and lifestyling services. Is the column still going on? Do you still uh, write that? The column is exclusively on the website now, functionalgirl.com. Hey, nice. So they can find that on the website. Absolutely. Yes. Well, actually, no, I, I just lied to you. I just lied to you. And this is still kind of a new development, which is why I just lied to you because I spaced. It's actually running in the San Marcos Mercury. No way. Yes. I like that. Uh, yeah. Uh, are they web-based only, Dino? They are web-based. All right. I see their tweets. I follow you guys. Y'all don't follow me back. <laughs> I'll speak to Brad about that. Yeah, maybe they do. I don't, I don't check Twitter. I'm a liar. Um, and so fast forward into today, what's Functional Girl look like in, in terms of uh, as, a, as a brand? Functional Girl today is no longer a lone, lone woman project. I've actually managed to assemble a team of pretty amazing girls. My Functional Girls. <laughs> <laughs> Plural now. Plural, yes. And I got to tell you, anybody who's in business knows that having a team a good team around you can make all the difference in the world between success and failure. Absolutely. And I'm unbelievably grateful to have these girls in my life and in my corner and on my team, but they're helping me to cultivate a multifaceted brand. I really believe Functional Girl has the potential to have a global platform and I want to build a mega brand. Um, we're a female focused lifestyle brand. One component of that is the lifestyling services, which is wardrobe styling, closet interventions, organizational solutions, you know, just things that kind of relate to the way you live in your home, in your everyday life. Uh, we teach workshops. Our most popular workshop is the self everything workshop, which is focused on body image and self-esteem. But we also teach workshops on professional development, personal branding, sisterhood, female culture. Ultimately, um, my primary focus with the workshops is body image and self-esteem. We really are existing in a culture that is hostile towards Mm -hmm. women, a culture that is driven on the idea that you're not good enough, you're never going to be good enough. But if you spend enough money, you just might make it one day. Right. So we really focus on trying to shift perspective with the women that take the workshops and make them understand that there's nothing wrong with them. It's not about them. They're they're perfect just the way they are. They're they're completely unique, one of a kind beings. That's what makes them priceless. Right. That's what makes them special. And it's not what makes them freaks or weird or wrong or an accident. Yeah. And it, one of the the kind of core ideas in the functional girl philosophy is sisterhood. You know, we we as women are really kind of conditioned to be at odds with one another. And we're so negative with each other, the way we communicate with each other, the way we think, think about ourselves mm-hmm. and each other. So one of our biggest components is promoting the idea that sisterhood should be prevalent amongst right. women, not the other way around. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I actually had the pleasure of sitting in on one of your Monday group meetings or fast forwarding a little bit because you now you have like a core group of, yeah. of ladies and speaking of that sisterhood, <laughs> that absolutely is what stood out to me the most is that camaraderie between y'all. Is that, um, is that what's super important to functional girl and, and all about what you stand for? It's certainly a key component. I think, as as the functional girls, it's really cool. I'm not just functional girl anymore. We're the girls. <laughs> you know, we really try and lead by example. And I'm sure you notice it's a really diverse group of girls. It really is. I mean, yeah. different personality types, different backgrounds. And yet there is such a steadfast respect yeah. for one another. And we genuinely enjoy each other and, and the diversity and what everybody brings to the table. And we we just have so much fun. And I think It's so great to be able to set an example for other women and show them what their relationships can be like and 
can be like and how other women can enrich their lives if if they open themselves to that possibility. It seems like you're filling a, vo a much needed void that was probably there. I don't know if this is a unique concept or not to you guys. You know, it's interesting you say that because um, every once in a while I'll come across other kind of female empowerment brands and people say, oh, doesn't it annoy you that they're doing the same thing? And I'm thinking, why would it annoy me? Because there's so many of us, because there's just too many people promoting positivity. Yeah, in this that's world. terrible. Yeah, there's just too many of us being positive and trying to celebrate one another. Yeah, go away, you know. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, this no, is my turn. of course it doesn't annoy me. Like, that goes back to the whole celebrating sisterhood. You know, we welcome like-minded women and like-minded yeah. brands. And, you know, we want to build an army, of people who want to change the world. Absolutely. Accomplishing that one one girl at a time. Yeah. And I heard from a little bird, you are currently working on a website redesign that will be launching decently soon. What is the uh, main goals of the website? What do you try to accomplish with it? And what are the purposes of uh, revamping the site? Oh, the saga of the website redesign. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we, we have been on, on a mission to redesign the website for a while now. Um, I, the website was an exercise in futility for me. I, I, I know nothing. I'm, I'm a Neo-Luddite. I am terrible at tech stuff, but I wanted to put a website up myself. And this was when I was still on my own. So I was like, oh, I'm just going to have a blog and I'll throw some things up about what I do and it'll be great. And it wasn't. And it's just, it's, it's time. It's time to offer a site that's truly a resource. And now that I have a core team of functional girls and they're writers and they're vloggers and, yeah. You know, I thought, what a fantastic idea to transition the site into more of an easing format, you know, a lifestyle easing where women can go to find information and resources for the way they want to live their lives. No, absolutely. And is that the brand from conception to today, I guess, is, is just evolving into this sort of whole covering a bunch of grounds rather than maybe just one niche? Like you're just about female and changing the, the culture, right? Certainly, it um, it has evolved. Uh, ultimately, I am insanely ambitious, and I want to build a mega brand. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I I want a brand that women can relate to and be a part of in every facet of their lives, right. from you know the way they live, the way they think, the way they buy. I would love to have consumer product lines, you know, fashion accessories, skincare, makeup, you name it. I think. I think Functional Girl has the potential to become a predominant female brand. Absolutely. And you, you have that entrepreneurial spirit. For our listeners, hanging out with CJ for even 10 minutes, you're <laughs> going to get uplifted with encouragement. You're going to come out her, of her home and just think you're going to conquer the world. But I, <laughs> I really, in the short time we've known each other, I love that, though, because you can tell, like, you're serious about this. It's not just a, a blog you have that if it fails, eh, whatever. Like, no, you're really um, passionate about it. And that's encouraging. Thanks. It's really nice. <laughs> I have, like I said, I have daughters now, so I have to look for this good role model type things for her. Because right. right now it's uh, Snooky is who they watch, okay? That, yeah. I, I said it. That's who they watch on TV. No, we don't have cable, and I wouldn't let them watch her. Well, you know, the interesting thing about Snooky, though, is as, you know, kind of vapid as her persona is on the Jersey show, sure, I, the show, I haven't even watched it, <laughs> but... This Nicole, her act, you know, this Nicole. I didn't even know she, that was her name. Right. Her name is actually Nicole. She has product lines. She, I believe she's written books. I mean, oh, wow. this girl, for as vapid as she seems on this TV show, she's actually a really smart businesswoman. Yeah. But you don't get to see that side of no, her. So, you don't. The so, marketing is definitely pushing you to a different image. It's than. very interesting where you have this component of this woman's personality that right. would be inspiring for right. young girls being completely hidden by this vapid sort of trashy image that's been created for her. Well, and that she's taken part in creating for herself, right, certainly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can't take that off her shoulders. But that's that tells you the sad state of female marketing right. in 2012. Right. That's what is going to sell more than rather Nicole, the smart businesswoman. Well, happy women don't spend as much money. Ah, they just don't. That that's that's a neat little secret advertising executives discovered a while back. You know, if if you tell a woman that she is old and fat and ugly, she's going to spend all of her money trying to be young and thin and beautiful. Right. 
and and you're gonna sell her everything she needs to be young and thin and beautiful you know that it's, doesn't work and perpetually will sell her right but you know i truly believe that empowering consumers is the way to build lifelong brand loyalty when you're selling a quick fix you'll get their money once or twice and when it doesn't work they'll move on but when you're selling empowerment and self-love you've got a customer for life right Absolutely. I truly believe that. And, and speaking of empowerment, y'all just launched the, um, like, a, it's not your initial video, but it's definitely <laughs> a, a flagship video yeah. for Functional Girl on your YouTube channel. It's uh, y'all's manifesto. is a visualization of your manifesto they right. can find on your website right. in, the, in the about section, section I yeah. believe. Uh, your YouTube channel is just growing just rapidly. Tons of views, tons of great feedback. I go through and read the, the comments. <laughs> Uh, I did some homework before this podcast. Nice. Uh, same with your social network accounts, your Facebook and your Twitter, just blowing up. What uh, Did you ever think in your wildest dreams Functional Girl would have such well reception and so quickly and organically as it has? I knew, I knew that women would respond to the brand because they always have. Mm-hmm. From the time the first column premiered to the time I taught the wor- first workshop, from the time I gave my first speech, it, people respond to positivity Mm -hmm. and I I knew that if I could just commit and be brave enough to believe that this dream was worthy that it would be successful but the this the online social media website you know part of it has certainly been a challenge because as I mentioned before (laughs) I am not exactly a techie genius and um yet (laughs) But I'm learning. I mean, the day I figured out how to leverage Twitter, it, it, it was it was like the angels were singing. I was like, oh, I get this. Right. I know your how to leverage t- and, this. And your Twitter is phenomenal in terms of following and retweets. And you have a real good user base. It's, it's amazing. It really is because you, I may be speaking out of turn, but you don't spend any advertising money no. on your brand. I mean, this is all just like this is our brand and people organically standing behind it, right? Right. Well, and I think it's just, you know, understanding that, social media and online having an online presence is a necessary evil of being in business today. And it's yeah. certainly not evil. Just, you know, it feels that way when I'm crying at 3 a.m. because I can't figure out why my website won't show up because I've done something to it. <laughs> but it's 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 about remaining resourceful and, and forcing yourself to battle through it and figure out why your website won't do what it's supposed to be doing and right. figuring out how to get CoverGirl to talk to you on Twitter and figuring out how to keep getting those Facebook likes. And it's it's been a real interesting challenge, but an incredible growth period. Yeah, it has. I've learned so much. And, you know, it'll be really nice when we have a full-time social media person because our, our strategy is aggressive, but social media is a full-time gig. Yeah, for real. It <laughs> really is. And it'll be interesting to see what happens when we do have someone working on it full-time. No, absolutely. And, and back to that YouTube video, which is just phenomenal. Like My, my wife loved it, and, and everyone I talked to loved it. How was it making that? How was the, the process through, for that? It was, it was pretty amazing to see something that came from my head and my heart that I dumped out onto a Word document and then put on the website. And then I got this idea that I wanted to shoot a video of like women saying these words and all different kinds of women because, you know, again, the marketing and the advertising industries, you know, oh, women don't want to see real women. Right. They, they want to see, you know, they want to see ideals. Right. Well, why can't everybody be an ideal? Absolutely. You know, I, I believe that everybody has to be their own ideal of beauty because everybody and their mama is going to have an opinion about what you look like. So you really do. I mean, you really have to be your own ideal of beauty. And I loved the idea that we could celebrate these unique women and make them a part of this messaging. And it 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 came out exactly the way I saw it in my head. It was really cool. Our videography team, um, Stephen Henderson and his partner, Whitney, just, they got it. Yeah. They, they did a great they job. They really just got it. And they, they said when they were leaving that day, they said, this is the most fun we've ever had on a video shoot, which hello, like that's exactly what you want to hear yeah. at the end of a long day. Absolutely. And, and I'm throwing lobs at you. I'm sorry. I'm not sucking up to you, but it really does. Like it really is a great video and it does seem like everyone is genuinely having a good time in it. And it was a blast. And it's already gotten a lot of hits. I mean, in the short, you uploaded it, what, uh, 10 days ago, maybe? Not even. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, m- maybe two weeks ago. Right, maybe. So it's, 
it's it's cool in, in terms of again you not going um not having to spend any of your money to market this right. and the immediate attention it's getting i think that uh, speaks wonders to where the brand is heading down the road fingers I, crossed fingers crossed <laughs> So, you know, I am confident, though, that there are plenty of listeners out there that are fully ready now to support you and the purpose of Functional Girl. Uh, What are some steps that our listeners can take if they want to be a part of Functional Girl or just help you spread your message? Well, you know, certainly get in touch with us on our social media, our Twitter. Our handle is at Functional Girl and you can search us on Facebook. Just search Functional Girl and the website is functionalgirl.com. And, you know, we make it real easy. Yeah. (laughs) You know, and you can send us an email, cj at functionalgirl.com. And, you know, that's that's the cool thing is because we want to be a resource, we welcome women with great ideas. And if you've got great tips on how to save money on your grocery budget and you want to write an article for Functional Girl, let us know. We'd love to have you. That's right. You know, so we welcome other fantastic women to be a part of the growth and the messaging and to bring their unique bit of special to the mix and the great thing too about the internet is that you can reach out to women all over Mm -hmm. that can contribute like i I absolutely love it with 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 cow life we have contributors that you know do that they their articles on our site and then on many others because they want to spread their article as much as possible but they're people you know, well, in this case, most of them are in Kyle. But, you know, right. I mean, the Internet's a fantastic thing, though, and that's yeah. great. You know, using it to your advantage, for sure. And um, before we wrap this up completely, you did mention your uh, your social network accounts. Could you drop them one more time again? It's Facebook.com. Is it forward slash Functional Girl? It's not because, again... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Because I I attached it to my personal Facebook account, which was already functional girl forward slash functional girl. So it's you, you kind of have to search it, but we're the only one. <laughs> nice. And You'll tw- see a big pink FG. <laughs> that, yeah, right. I, I don't know how many functional girl handles there are out there yet. Is well, there? there's there's the only one functional girl Twitter handle. So so at functional girl for Twitter. So at Twitter.com functional girl. forward slash functional girl. girl. Yeah. Website at functional girl.com. Mm-hmm. And then what's an email? Like if they hear this and they're like, Hey, I want to be a writer. You can shoot me an email directly. CJ at functional girl.com. If you want general information, you can send an email to info at functional girl.com. And we also have a contact form on the website. So you can, uh, anything coming up in, in the immediate future that y'all are doing? We do have something coming up in the immediate future. We're actually very excited. We have partnered with Dojo Kyle. What? Uh, yeah. And which we're super excited about because we're offering a free self-defense workshop for women. And we're calling it the Warrior Princess Workshop, which just rocks my socks. I can't even tell you. I'm like, we decided on the name and we were like, that's so awesome. <laughs> we're warrior princesses. So it's it's going to be a really great workshop for girls ages 12 and up. And Kyle Police Department will be there speaking about female victimization statistics, effective situational awareness practices. And the guys over at Dojo Kyle, Will and Ryan, are going to be teaching some basic self-defense techniques, you know, for various scenarios. And we're particularly excited because they specialize in jujitsu over at the dojo and Will was saying that jujitsu is a great martial art form for women because the focus is on technique and leverage, not necessarily about body size. So it allows a smaller opponent to overtake a larger opponent, which frequently in situations where women are being victimized, they are the smaller opponents. Yeah, that's the that's the sad reality of it. Yeah. Right. So we're just beyond excited and that's coming up on October thirteenth. So October thirteenth at what time? 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. 9 a.m. And where can, can they register on the site yet? Or? Yes. Yes. They'll be able to go to functionalgirl.com and you'll see the the little warrior princess registration page and you can get more information there and you can also shoot us an email for more information space, as well. Space limited? Space is limited. We only have 30 slots available. So if you're interested, do not wait. But no it, kidding. It, it won't be the last one. And completely free completely free are y'all gonna be filming out there for it we are we're going to be shooting some video we're going to be shooting photos um just you know documenting the event and hoping to secure sponsors for the next one awesome 
Yeah. Well, we will definitely um, help promote whatever it is that y'all are doing in the community. We stand behind what you're doing. Thank as a you. As a father of daughters, that's the only reason I'm standing behind you now. <laughs> if I had boys, no. But no, no way. No. But y'all are doing great things. And, and I really, truly appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. It's been a blast knowing you. Thank you. It was, it was a real pleasure. So that will do it for this episode of the Cow Life Podcast. If you'd like more information on Functional Girl, you can find it on our webpage, www.cowlife.com in the show notes, or visit functionalgirl.com or one of their many social network accounts. For cowlife.com and the Pearl Media Network, I'm Joshua Steubing. Thank you for listening. Hi.